Apparently, Monster and Leela are organizing a joint event. That's pretty cool. Wonder what occasions brought them together. Let's ask around and see if we can find out. Now, we just need a major transport hub where lots of travelers trade info. Preferably one that's high up with a great line of sight. Um... Oh! Got it! Launch you in! Come on, let's go!
<laughs> Do I spy a traveler and a Paimon? We were just talking about you. This is more serendipitous than finding Mora after face planting on the road. <laughs> it's been too long. I'll bet you have some thrilling new tales from your journey to fill me in on. I can see it in your eyes. Excellent! <laughs> I knew I could count on you. What were you talking about before we got here? Something fun? Or oh, something delicious? <laughs> we were talking about one certain traveler and how two's company but three's a crowd as the inseparable duo tore around to that, making four friends here and five more there, often at sixes and sevens as they brave the lakes and seas, collecting pieces of eight and countless other treasures. <laughs> they clearly must have nine lives. Wink, wink. Let's hope they have less than ten deaths. What the? It just gets worse and worse. Shortly, you may attend a grand banquet at Stonegate. All will be dressed to the nines for majestic food and fine wines. And after eight long drinks and seven shorts, they'll each write six lines five times. You've been to all four corners of the world, so in three short seconds, can you guess from these two stanzas of one speech each what this event is about? Correct! It's a poetry gala, and Mondstadt and Liyue are hosting it together. Do you still remember the promise I made to the distinguished director who here during the Lantern Rite? Oh, something about writing poetry together? That's right. At the dinner table that night, I just knew this young bard was a rare talent with exceptional taste. You know, it's rare to encounter such a kindred spirit. And now, I finally seized the chance to collaborate. It took me much trekking across the land to petition Eugene Terrace and contact the Knights of Favonius, but eventually... In the spirit of friendship and poetry sharing, I managed to successfully organize the Neighboring Nation's Congenial Poetry Gala. Bit of a weird name. Lewis poetry is known far and wide, and Mondstadt is the city of wine and song. With two nations teaming up, it'll be double the fun, and a great chance for people from both places to get to know one another. Hutao and I will be the co-hosts for this poetry gala. Of course, I haven't studied the various forms and formalities of Liyue poetry for very long, so please forgive my dreadful performance just now. Not at all, Venti. You followed my lead most excellently. <laughs> you flatter me. Well, this sounds like fun. Let's get involved! be amazing! Remember that time in Liyue when Paimon gave you the first half of a couplet? Wind rises, winds never churn. You came up with the second half right away! Oh, looks like someone's got a knack for this. Perhaps we'll have to raise the difficulty a little. Alright, so basically you guys are here to discuss the activities for the poetry gala, right? Oh, looks like little Paimon's brain has gained a wrinkle or two. You guessed it so effortlessly, but... You still guessed it wrong. Huh? Wait, Paimon guessed wrong? We came here hoping to invite a special guest.
I already told you, I'm not going. Never having penned a verse myself, how could I hope to judge the poetry of others? Besides, afflicted with karma as I am, the raucous atmosphere you are cultivating is precisely the kind which I must avoid, as you well know. Hey now, there's a first time for everything, right? We all start from itsy bitsy spider, but give it a shot and you'll be wandering lonely as a cloud in no time. And you don't even have to join us in person if you really don't want to. You can just watch the party from a nearby mountaintop and uh, cheer us on. But at least head down and take a look first. It's right by the inn and there's plenty of fun activities to get involved with. It can't hurt to take a quick walk and check things out. Besides, with the renowned traveler here, what is there to fear? <sighs> I'll consider it. It's nearly time! Why don't you all head to the venue and take a look around? Quite a few of your friends should have arrived by now. Yes, that's right! Venti and I still need to discuss the poem for the opening ceremony. So, uh, we'll catch up with you later. Plus, our adeptus friend might need a bit more convincing. We'll see if we can coax him down. Gotcha! We'll be on our way then! Let's guess where you're from. Hmm, how about that for an opening? Yes, yes, I like it. But if we could give it a bit more oomph, it would be even better. I think we should lead with a bang, dip into a slippity slide, then whoosh into a whoop whoop boom! Got it? Got it. <laughs> Completely understood. Huh. 
should be so many people here already. And a lot of them are familiar faces. Let's go say hi. It's the Traveler in Paimon. Are you here for the Neighboring Nations Congenial Poetry Gala as well? <laughs> you said that with a straight face? Is Paimon the only one who thinks it sounds weird? Re representatives Uh, no. Nothing fancy like that. We were sent here by the Knights of Favonius to help maintain order and set up the venue. But... Uh, I didn't really do anything useful so far. Noelle brought all these tables and chairs here from Mondstadt by herself. Well, now, that's just not true. Your efforts were indispensable. You selected the venue, drew up the layout, and so on. Also, you're the true knight here. I'm still in training. If anything, I should be addressing you as sir. What? No, 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 no. Please don't. Just keep calling me Mika. Uh, why does it feel like these two could keep this up all day? Anyway, Master Jane did say that as long as we keep on top of our work, we should take a look around while we're here and get involved in the poetry gala as much as we can. But I haven't written much poetry before, so I'm not sure if I'll fit in. I actually have the same concern. Yeah, plus, you won't be alone. We're joining too. The Traveler's a really good writer, you know. Really? In that case, we'll try our best, too. Perhaps. The challenge of writing poetry is a rite of passage that all who wish to qualify as a knight must eventually face. Uh, Pana wouldn't go that far. But anyway, no backing out now! See you soon! Sure. Maybe you can teach me a thing or two. Oh, Mika beat me to it. I was gonna ask for help, too. What do you think the key to a good poem is, Mika? Do you have any idea? Huh? I... uh... I'm not too sure, either. If I'd known we'd be doing this sooner, I would've asked Miss Lisa to recommend some books on the topic. Traveler in Paimon? Uh, I didn't expect to see you here. Are you here to mix drinks? That's right. I was specially asked to attend this event on behalf of the Cat's Tale, and I'm also here as a mixologist representing the Mondstadt wine industry. You're representing Mondstadt's wine industry? Oh, you must be hating every minute of it. Of course I hate it! But it's also a perfect chance to destroy the reputation of Mondstadt's wine business once and for all. Opportunities like this don't come around every day, you know. Huh? How do you figure that? <laughs> all I need to do is add some gross ingredients to the drinks, and I can create the most disgusting concoctions imaginable. <laughs> Nobody will ever buy wine from Mondstadt again. <laughs> you'll end up getting the opposite result. Huh, just you wait! I ain't about to mess this up. Are you gonna write some poetry with us too? Poetry? Hmm, I've heard plenty of bards sing in the tavern before, but I've never tried writing any myself. You should join in, it'll be fun! Fine, if I have time. Now, should I try adding loach pearls or horse tails next? Oh, wait! Since we're in Liyue, mm, I should add some Jueyun chilies. Ha <laughs> ha! Hmm? Well, look. 
look who's here! This poetry fest seems to have attracted talent of the highest caliber. Hey! Xingqiu and Changyun are here too! I was actually heading into the mountains to train, but he accosted me on the way and dragged me here. Oh, how your words wound me. Is it not the responsibility of an exorcist of Liyue to ensure that this celebration of friendship between our two nations stays free of evil spirits? Besides, this is an excellent opportunity to meet heroes who have come from far and wide. Surely, you must be curious as to how that heroine of Mondstadt was able to lift such heavy objects like they were but a feather. Are you talking about Noelle? Yeah, she's super strong! Oh? Well, since you are so well acquainted, could we trouble you to introduce us later? Okay, fine. But don't forget to help me with my investigation like you promised. That's the only reason I agreed to come at all. Huh? What investigation? <clears throat> Naturally, I could never forget such a thing. My word is my bond. Relax, dear Paimon. All will be revealed in time. Uh, okay. Are you sure that wasn't really an evil spirit? Open your mind to all possibilities, and I'm sure you will find the answer. I suppose that's true. Hey, wait a second! You're not planning on telling everyone here, are you? and melodies wandering the wind, wafting to pastures beyond their home. Two greedy fishies struggling to swim. They ate so much that they're starting to groan. Animal crystal fly draped in gold robes, a bright little light from that glaze lantern glows. Benches pinch the rice and scoot while the boars of the forest anxiously root. Welcome, one and all, to this festival of poetry, jointly organized by Lua and Mondstadt. Or, in full, the Neighboring Nations Congenial Poetry Gala. We're your hosts, Liyue's verse monger of the darkest alleys, Hu Tao. And Mondstadt's liquor-loving lyricist, Venti the Bard. The purpose of this event is to promote friendly poetic exchanges between our two nations. So please, have fun, talk to other people, and make some new friends. If you're here, you're our guest. So please enjoy this poetry fest. I'd also like to reassure everyone that this event welcomes people of all skill levels, from first-time rhymers to seasoned songwriters. If you ask me, the most important thing you can bring to writing poetry is authenticity. That means reaching deep down to all the thoughts and feelings you usually hide away or struggle to express and putting them into words. Just write from the heart in whatever form you like. To help everyone really cut loose and enjoy themselves to the fullest, Venti and I have carefully prepared a three themes to be revealed over the course of three days. Let's get right to it. The first theme is Riddle Me This. Solving riddles, huh? Interesting. It's actually a pretty good choice for a warm-up activity. Whew. I'm glad they're not making us write sonnets or something right at the start. Does everyone see the lanterns hanging around the venue? These have been specially prepared for the riddle game. Simply write down your riddle and hang it on a lantern. Then Venti and I will select a few to pose to the crowd, and you will try to solve them. We'll now give you some time to write down and hang up your riddles. Feel free to walk around and talk with the other contestants to get the creative juices flowing. And remember, whoever guesses the most riddles correctly will get a prize. And with that, the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala has officially begun.
couldn't cajole Adeptus Chow in the end. He said he'd take a peek from the peaks, but that was all he'd agreed to. It's a real shame. I had the perfect poem for his entrance and everything. <laughs> that was a good little opening ceremony, wasn't it? Even if I do say so myself. Rome. A visitor asks me why, for a dream beyond the sky. Okay, someone from Leela definitely wrote this one. I just read that one too. Leela's poems seem pretty difficult to grasp. Dreams? Sky? Is it talking about some kind of bird? Um, so it means something like, uh, this thing's really far from home, it's in a vast area, and it's flying really high! Is that it? Oh, you're amazing, Paimon! Oh, it looks like I still have a lot of learning to do. Oh, it's nothing, really. Once you've spent enough time in Liyue, you just sort of pick up on these things. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Back when I was out with the Grandmaster on the expedition, I started picking up some local customs without even realizing it. But back to the riddle. We still haven't actually solved it. What could it be talking about? Something that flies high and far. Hmm. Oh, that makes me think of dandelions. Oh, that makes sense. And Mondstatters believe that dandelions can carry your feelings on the wind. But maybe we're missing something? We can't be that easy. After all, it's a riddle from Liyue. What would their equivalent of the dandelion be? If there even is one. What do you think, Traveler? Great! Then we'll have one answer ready to go when the game begins. Right! Just like Venti said. As long as the interpretation makes sense and reflects our perception of the poem, then perhaps there are no wrong answers. Well, no matter what the real answer is, the guessing's all a part of the fun! Let's go look at the next one! Oh, yes! I want to see if there's any Mondstadt-style riddles. It's just awful. Um, I have four corners like a square pancake, but I'm stuffed and seasoned and carefully baked. I pass through the lips one piece at a time. The more you consume, the broader your mind. Oh, wow, Paimon's drooling from that one. Is there really a food that can make you smarter? Paimon's gotta try that! <laughs> oh, Paimon. You have to look past the surface-level meaning with riddles, or you'll fail to plumb their depths. Huh? So have you got any ideas, Shincho? <laughs> well... Singcho just hung that riddle up a moment ago. Oh, so this is Shincho's riddle! You know, Paimon was expecting you to write something a little more... Elegant. This festival is about building friendship and mutual understanding. With so many friends from Mondstadt present, I thought I'd try writing something more accessible and less flowery, so that more people could enjoy it. Hey, not bad! Uh, so, buddy, does that mean you can tell your old pal Paimon the answer on the sly, or...? Not a chance. You'll have to wait for the answer to be revealed, just like everyone else. Huh! Mimi! If that's how you feel, why don't you try and stump me with a riddle of your own? Uh, oh, maybe Paimon will! We'll see who stumps who! 
Traveler, you'll help Paimon come up with a riddle, right? Ha! At least you're nice to Paimon! <laughs> then I look forward to seeing the fruits of your literary labors. that the chairs get tired from working all the time, so they shouldn't use them to sharpen their claws. Oh, okay. So a riddle needs to have a bait and switch. Are you trying to write one? Yep, and thanks to you, Paimon's just thought of one. Maybe I should try to come up with one, too. Do you want to know the answer? Nah, no need. I don't really care about winning a prize. Oh, okay then. Well, looks like it's time to carry on with the event. We should regroup with the others. Sure, have fun. Looks like everyone's about done mingling and riddling. Gather round and look this way. Venti and I have selected several riddles from everyone's contributions, and we added a few of our own to the mix for good measure. Shortly, we'll randomly select a few to read aloud. If your riddle gets selected, remember that you have to announce the correct answer at the end. Anyone who guesses correctly gets one point, and if nobody guesses correctly, the writer of the riddle gets a point. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> of course, when the riddler reveals the right response, it only counts if everyone agrees that it's not too far-fetched. That's right. Now, if there are no more questions, it's time to reveal the first riddle. Hopefully, they'll draw at least some that I can get. Oh no, does only the first person to solve it get the points? 
Ugh. That means I have to be first to raise my hand. Please choose Paimon's riddle. Please choose Paimon's riddle. Riddle number one. Let me see here. Ugh. This riddle is, uh, unique. Um, especially the handwriting. I have four? Co four. Four corners, like a square pancake. But I'm stuffed. Stuffed and seasoned and carefully baked. Baked? Baked. I pass through the chips, lips, uh, one piece at a time. The more you uh, consume, 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 the broader your mind. <gasps> they drew shinchos! Better answer as quickly as you can. You don't want someone else beating you to it. You brat! Um, it's, uh, pizza! The answer is pizza! Even without the author coming forward, I can confidently declare this answer wrong. I mean, how does eating pizza broaden your mind? And... While I'm no expert in exotic dishes, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> pizza is round, is it not? Like mora meat? But eating pizza makes you happy, and being happy makes it easier to face problems that need solving, so... Okay, Paimon admits she may have jumped the gun on this one. Maybe it's some other kind of food. No, 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 no. Riddles are never that simple. And it needs to be something that makes people more intelligent. Oh, if Paimon had known it was going to be this tough, she'd have read more books in her time. Uh, what is it? Have you got it? Huh? <laughs> that was quicker than I expected. I was quite proud of that one. Oh, it appears the riddle writer has announced the answer. Okay, one point to Paimon. Huh? So the answer was books? Oh, how did I not get that? Come on, Mika, concentrate. <laughs> We're awesome at this! Uh, what Paima meant to say was that you're awesome at this. Thanks for the point, Traveler. On to riddle number two. I gotta get in there first this time. High above the wispy clouds, amidst the gloomy snow-filled shroud, standing alone on an icy stage, beneath it every lowly sage. <laughs> Looks like a poem from Leela. Oh, it's... I got it! Uh, oh, uh. uh, looks like those two have some ideas. Hmm, could it be some kind of plant that lives in cold, high places? Mika, please go ahead. As a full knight of Avonius, you represent all of us from Mondstadt here. Uh, no. No, how could I? It was you who thought of it first. You should be the one to guess. Well, my answer isn't necessarily correct. Besides, it's first come, first served, and you beat me to it. N no, I didn't. You were just before me. Uh, how gracious and considerate our fellow competitors are towards each other. A wonderful sight to see. How about both of you say your answer at the same time? If you're both right, you'll each get a point. Oops, I didn't realize we'd made such a scene. Oh, crud. I guess we dragged that out a bit. Um, so, Noelle, uh, what do you say? Yes, let's. Our answer is... Cecilia! Cecilia. Oh, that certainly sounds like a good candidate for the correct answer. 
a flower that blooms on the highest peaks and known for its exquisite beauty. The Cecilia is held by many Mondstadters to be the true Windblue. Uh, although since the writer hasn't yet come forward to announce the answer, this probably wasn't the answer they were looking for. <laughs> Sorry. Any other answers? Oh, I can't believe I was wrong. Maybe it's a plant from Li Yue. Is the answer Qingxin? The poem does evoke a strong sense of quiet, proud solitude in a high place. Correct! I wrote this one. Qingxin is the right answer. No! Xinjo got it before Paimon could! However, after listening to the host's description, I do remember reading about Cecilia flowers in a book once. They definitely fit the description of a pure flower standing proudly and alone on high. So, I'd like to approve the answer from our two friends from Mondstadt as well. Really? Oh, well, thank you so much! <laughs> well, since even the Riddler themselves agrees, all three contestants earn a point each! Darn it! Shinjo's caught up to Paimon already! Yeah, you're probably right. Moving now to our third riddle. Huh? Why is the handwriting so... floaty? What's got no wings but flies in the air, never gets tired of floating up there. So full of mora it comes out the nose, but in the sea, glug, 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 down it goes. That's Paimon's. They picked Paimon's riddle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Why isn't anyone guessing? Is Paimon's riddle too hard? That's not quite it. More like... It's so ludicrously simple that we just cannot believe it. What? No way! Well, go on then! Tell us the answer if you're so sure! The answer is Paimon. Uh, what? It's Paimon. I was actually going to say Paimon, too. Me, too. Uh, no! You're all completely wrong! <laughs> How the heck did you all think the answer was Paimon? Paimon, do you have wings behind your back? Uh, no. You're always floating, but you never seem to get tired of it. And Paimon has a very healthy appetite, which must cost the Traveler a lot of Mora and meal expenses. I've heard from the Senior Knights that the Traveler rescued Paimon by fishing her out of the sea. So, that means Paimon can't swim. So if she fell in the sea, then... Uh... Glug, glug, glug. Wait, wait! Now Paimon's doubting herself! What was the answer again? No! You're all wrong! The answer to Paimon's fatal is obviously the Jade Chamber! You know, the Jade Chamber that's always flying up there in the sky? Is that so? Hmm... I still maintain that the riddle actually describes Paimon more accurately. In fact, if we just added two more lines to the poem, it would be the perfect riddle. The Traveler's Companion and Talkative Guide. A praiseworthy presence always by their side. Aww, do you mean it? Can we really add that part? <gasps> you think so cute? <laughs> okay, then Paimon would like to announce that the correct answer to the riddle is... The Lightly Adored Paimon! Great! And with that, the widely adored Paimon has gifted a point each to everyone who answered just now. <laughs> Guessing riddles is a lot of fun. And even though Paimon didn't manage to beat Xingqiu, Paimon still feels like she got a little smarter. Oh, uh, didn't Chongyu mention he was investigating something before? Let's go ask him about it.
Oh? Hi, Paimon. You know, for a moment there, I was worried I might lose to you. Oh, are you collecting your prize right now? I am indeed. Though, if you really want it, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. Seriously? Wow, what is it? Um... A most generous donation by yours truly, as director of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Namely, a buy one, get one free coupon for our high-end customized service package. It's a pleasant surprise to learn. You're so interested in it, Paimon. <laughs> nope, nah, -uh. no thank you, hard pass, you can keep it. Are you sure? In that case, I'll gladly take it. Here you are. Now remember, this package comes with our anytime, anywhere, on-demand collection service. Just give us a call and we'll be right there. Uh, with any luck, <laughs> we'll still show up even if you're <clears throat> unable to call. So, to what do we owe the honor, Paimon? <laughs> what do you mean, we? Chanyun's the one Paimon's looking for, not you. Wasn't he saying something about needing help? Oh, yeah. That. How about I put it in riddle form? Huh? Isn't the competition over? Twas like a demon not demonic, or devil devoid of the diabolic. Afar it floated free above the ground, but when approached, though sought, not could be found. Um... Sounds to me like you encountered a ghastly little ghosty in the wild. Perhaps I should just explain it. Basically, while I was training this morning, I suddenly caught sight of a non-human entity. It was floating in the air without any kind of external aid, and its body was almost transparent. At first I thought I'd finally encountered a demon that wasn't propelled by my pure yang spirit, and immediately prepared to exorcise it. But none of my methods had any effect on it. And when I went to try and get a closer look at it, and try to ascertain what I was dealing with, it disappeared into thin air. Hmm, you're sure it's not a ghost or spirit of some kind? Quite sure. I could sense that it had a physical body. And if it were a spirit, I'm sure it would have been scared away long before I saw it. It's all my fault. I got overexcited, and in my haste, I didn't ascertain its true nature before taking action. Thinking back on it, if it wasn't an evil spirit, maybe I offended some kind of adeptus or illuminated beast. You shouldn't blame yourself. It was something you'd never seen before. Anyone else would have reacted the same way. Besides, we're making up for it now by doing our best to find out the truth. Any thoughts, Venti? Have you managed to untangle Chong Yun's twisted tail? Hmm, why don't you take a guess first, Tu Tao? Oh, that means you have. <laughs> I can't be absolutely certain, but I'm reasonably sure it's not what Li Wei would call an evil spirit or demon. So whatever it is, it's not dangerous. Hmm, how about this? We can incorporate a search element into tomorrow's poetry activity. Oh, does that mean we get to play outside while we write poetry? <laughs> Close, but no. Good ideas could just pop into your head out of thin air, but if you ask me, everyone should relax tonight and get a good rest before tomorrow. You say that, but your gaze keeps drifting over towards the wine stand.